What's going on, everyone? Welcome to another episode of the Proverbial Life Podcast. This is a podcast where we encourage Christians to look to Christ, live wisely, and leave a legacy behind for generations to follow. I've got a lot to say today, y'all. A lot. And I'm 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 heated. <laughs> but I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna be patient and I'm gonna try to be as clear as I can. And where I fall short. Uh, I'm open to uh, any any pushback or clarification or further dialogue. But what am I upset about? I'm 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 upset about the the bearing of false witness and the slander and the lies by many people who just speak before they have all the facts concerning topics of race and police interaction with people of color and all, 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 all that, that whole spectrum. It's frustrating because there are people with platforms that speak before they get the facts and they make all kinds of statements that are not true, that are based on emotion and then when you bring in factual information, now you're being insensitive and, and you're not loving and you're not patient and you're not kind. And it, it, it's sickening because as professing believers in Christ, we're to be people of the book. We're to be people who speak the truth. We're to be people who evaluate a situation and wait for more information before we make a judgment, and our judgment is not biased. We don't show partiality in our judgment, or we shouldn't. But when you start making sweeping statements and accusing brothers and sisters, or accusing or slandering uh, the, 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 the law enforcement, right? And you start saying, well, well George Floyd was killed because of racism, or uh, this, this lieutenant... Uh, was was pulled over uh, by the cops because of racism. And we got a problem with systemic racism in our country. And if you can't see that, then look at the evidence. And you can't see that, then you're blind. Come on, bro. Come on, man. And then, and then what kills me, man, the most, this is what bothers me the most. I don't know if this is what bothers me the most. Y'all bear with me. I don't know if this is what bothers me the most, but it's pretty high up there. All right, it's pretty high up there. You know what bothers me the most, man? What bothers me the most is that when white people, that's right, I said it, white people. Now, I, now I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get to my, 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 my people of color as well. But you know what bothers me the most, man? is when white people who admittedly now this ain't all white people let me let me make some nuances here some preference okay let me make some 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 clarifying statements not not all white people but when when these kinds of white people who in my opinion seem to have this sense of white guilt again that's my opinion when they have this sense of white guilt looming over them Whatever, and I don't even know why, the, the motivation behind that, whatever experiences they had or whatever. But it's like whenever something like the cases we see take place, like George Floyd or uh, the, 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 the Nazario case, the situation in, in Virginia where the, where the police officer pulled him over, uh, uh, pulled this lieutenant over and sprayed him with pepper spray. When, when these kinds of, when, when, when these people, these white people who have this sense of, white guilt or whatever it is that it is tend to now want to berate people who don't agree with with their conclusion which by the way they conclude not based on ongoing relationship with black people but based on a narrative that they've heard from people of color and I'm going to explain what I mean okay I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm going to try to go in a little more detail than just that but but it, it kills me when when those kinds of white people now are the experts, right? And now they want to use their privilege, right? 
their voice because according to people on the woke spectrum and according to white people who identify as being privileged, they have this like human superpower that they have to use to advocate for the voice of the voiceless. And it's those kinds of white people, man, that are most dangerous because they think they're helping, but they're not. And I'm going to show you a video of an individual who thinks he's helping, but he's not. And then I'm going to show you a follow-up video that will go into a little more detail concerning the Nazario situation. And then, if I have enough time, there's another video I want to make a little later of another guy who, who in his mind, has it all figured out. But unfortunately, that is not the case. So before I play this video, let me say this, man. What, what, what should we do? What should be our posture whenever we see anything, anything exposed from the media? Right? Whatever, if a story leaks out, what is the Christian's posture? What should we do? We should wait. Wait for all the information to come out. Wait for all the the, the 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 story to come in, right? We gather information. That's what we do, but but what we tend to do, and 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 I, I think I, I partially know why we do this. Sometimes, especially when you're in the YouTube world, you got to break the story, right? You got to break the story. And so uh, Amid Arbery get, gets killed. I don't need all the facts. I got to break the story. Okay. I, I got to be the first one so that I'm recognized as having the answers. And it's solidified that I have empathy. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm, I'm a bit amped up. But it's frustrating, man, because it's lies. It's lies. And what's ma what makes it frustrating, man, is that I was perpetuating those lies as well. I was there. I used to be woke, for those of you who, uh, who don't know. Maybe you're new to this channel. You don't know that. I used to be woke. And I used to be the type of woke person that don't read the story but just look at the headline. All right? I would look at the headline and I would conclude racism, systemic racism. Can't you see it? It's right there in the article. And somebody would say, yo, E, that's what the article headline says. But did you read the article? Oh, no. Nah. Or, or what about these articles, right? right? Or, or what about this new set of information? But I was convinced in my heart of hearts, in my mind, that, that systemic racism was a thing because a black man was killed by a white officer. Which, by the way, isn't it funny? The, 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 it's interesting, right? So... So the Amit Arbery case, right? Well, well, it's racism because those are white guys, and and uh, you know, and then the the George Floyd thing was well, racism because it was a black guy and a white officer, and he had his knee on his neck, which he didn't. He didn't have his knee on his neck. So stop, stop lying. He didn't have his knee on his neck. Now you you can say Edwin, I wasn't lying. That was all the information I had, right? But if you started coming out, right, making videos and perpetuating false information. That's one thing if you did it ignorantly, but if you keep doing it after more information comes out, then you're perpetuating a lie. So just humble yourself and speak the truth. That's all. That's it. And just wait until you gather all the information. Now how about this? Just don't say nothing. <laughs> just don't say nothing. All right. So... The, the interesting thing about the Nazario situation, and again, I'll point this out, uh, but the, the police officer who sprayed him with pepper spray, his name was Joe Gutierrez, if I'm not mistaken. I mean, last time I checked, Gutierrez is not a European name. <laughs> uh, Gutierrez is a Latino name. But, but listen, it doesn't matter when you're woke, right? Because when you're woke, you could be a person of color and you could fall under the category of systemic racism and white privilege because you're, you're, you're enabling 
the 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 the, the system, right? So so Gutierrez falls under whiteness because of his privileged authority and because what he did was involving a person of color, another person of color. See that all this all this game. All this gets so murky and 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 just foolish. But this is what we've got to do. We've got to we've got to play these games if you play by the world standard. You see we got we got to start using the world's tactics and reasoning and mindset once we start playing their games. But we don't have to. Like if you're a Christian, you don't have to think in these terms. You don't have to to embrace their worldview or 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 use their tools. You don't have to do that. And in fact, you'll be sinning if you do. I'm telling y'all, I'm amped up. But for those of you who follow my content, y'all know this is just my style, man. I get I get amped up. All right. Anyway, with no further ado, let me play you two videos. One of them is 14 minutes. I'm going to start and stop it. This is going to be it's going to be a little long, y'all. It's going to be a little long. All right. Now, the person who I whose video I'm going to play, I, I I have no angst against this person personally, okay? So I just want you to know I'm not attacking the person, but I want to deal with the ideas. I want to deal with what he's communicating. And I disagree with him. And I'm going to have my opinions on uh, some of my takeaways from what he's communicating. And then I'm going to state some facts that this that, that, that come against some of the things that he's saying. So I just want to, it has to be said, I'm not, I don't, I don't dislike this person, okay? But I am going to confront and come against the ideas this person is promoting. All right. So no further ado, let me switch my camera here. All right. Let me see. There we go. All right. Let me put my volume up. I wish I had my headphones. I don't. Uh, that's okay. Hopefully it's not too much of an echo. Let me. Hopefully it's not too much of an echo. All right. Let's get right into it. Hello, faithful friends of the internet. I'm Jason Mayfield, and normally I simply teach the Bible and help people experience grace for life, the greatest transformation that most people shall ever experience. However, in this video, I am sharing some opinions, some commentary. I want to talk to you, and I don't know that I'm saying his name 100% correctly. I want to talk to you about Quran Nazario. Uh, Lieutenant Nazario, Nazario would be easier because it's Quran. I'm not sure I'm saying right. Lieutenant Nazario, I could call him. Uh, I, I want to talk to you for a moment about some racial issues. Uh, last year, uh, okay, let's stop here. <laughs> Racial issues. All right. Now, notice the video is titled The George Floyd You Can't Ignore. So he's connecting the George Floyd case with the Nazario situation, and he's concluding that it's racist, race, race based. Now, again, that's perpetuating a lie. That is not the truth. Are we saying that Derek Chauvin was hunting down this black man in, in George Floyd. And and, and, and and if that can be proven, then this is a race issue. But if it can't be proven, then it's a lie. And the same goes for the Nazario situation. So this, this isn't a racial issue. Now how the world spins it, how the media spins it, how your cultural Marxist or revolutionary or, you know, uh, uh, Marxist friend or neighbor or church friend interprets it is a whole nother situation. But we've got to deal in the realm of truth. And this, my friend, is not a race issue. Uh, the death of George Floyd uh, was a lightning rod around the world. Uh, personally, for me, at the time, I found myself immersed in the realization that there was, in fact, a problem. and A problem? See, what he basically saying is, is that as a white guy, this is the first time he's ever come to the realization that racism was as real as it was. Again, brothers and sisters, again, 
It's so easy for us to be deceived in our minds. The spiritual warfare that we go through, brothers and sisters, is, it, 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 it is in the mind. It's in the mind. And if we don't guard the truth of God's word, it's so easy for us to get wrapped into the philosophy of the world. First of all, no Christian comes to the realization for the first time in their life, no person, I didn't say Christian, no person should come to the realization for the first time in their lives only after witnessing the George Floyd situation that racism is a thing. Now, now he didn't say he, he didn't say that, but he's alluding to the fact that that racism is oh really a problem now. Number one, the George Floyd thing again wasn't an issue of racism. You would have to be the fourth person of the Trinity to know the motives and intent of uh, of Derek Chauvin's heart, unless there was factual information that 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 came about as a result of their investigation. Which, by the way, the investigation is being proved. It, it, it's it's proving itself that George Floyd, number one, wasn't killed because he Derek Chauvin had his neck on, his knee on his neck. But he was pumped up on drugs. All right. Let me continue. Um, you know, you know, now we're at a time at the, the filming of this video that uh, the officer, Derek Chauvin, Chauvin, I think is how you say it, uh, who had put his knee on George Floyd's neck. Um, no, he didn't. He didn't put his knee on his neck. And... What's wild about the whole case, man, with the Derek Chauvin thing? Again, I'm not saying that Derek Chauvin, um, you know, I, I, I'm not saying that he did everything right. I don't know. I don't know. But I do know this. Derek Chauvin used less force than he is permitted to use with George Floyd. He, he could have tased him, but he used less force. Why? Well, because, probably because he didn't want this to be constructed as a racist thing. He didn't want to kill him. Could you imagine if he would have shot him with the, the taser? Uh, he, he would have been dead on the spot. It wouldn't have been nine minutes on his knee on the, the, the back of his shoulder blade. It wouldn't have been that. It would have been instantaneous because George Floyd ended up dying from a heart attack on uh, uh, because he was pumped up with the amount of drugs he was pumped up with. Okay, um, let me let him finish. That potentially caused his death, and those uh, details are in question on the trial right now. Um, but Derek Chauvin is on trial at the moment. The reality, which, which this is again, he's on trial right now, right? So, so, so in America, we have this thing called due process, right? Every every person is innocent till proven guilty. But when it gets into the court of opinion, before Chauvin was found innocent or guilty, which is it's in trial right now, the popular opinion was that he was guilty. ESPN was promoting this ideology. Schools were... I mean, maybe there were, there were many countless Christians that were, right? They, we had this Blackout Tuesday... Uh, all this while we were being incarcerated in our homes during the whole pandemic, right? W what is being called or what has been called the pandemic. Man, we, brothers and sisters, we need to be people of the truth. And we need to be able to interpret the times that we're living in in light of the word of God. And the devil is, 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 is slick, and he's deceptive, and he's manipulative. And he will come in and show himself to, to be clothed in truth, when all the while he is a slithering, sneaky, slimy, lying snake. That's exactly what many people have fallen into when they repeat and parrot Ideas that the world promotes without gaining substantial evidence and information. 
thing is, uh, love it or hate it, that George Floyd's condition related to his own drug use uh, at the time of his arrest has brought some disparagement on the validity of this tragic uh, or this tragic incident being uh, reflective of a national issue with racism or how minority groups. See? See that? Racism or how minority groups are treated or something like that he's going to say. See, that's, that, that is the narrative that the ungodly repeat or say. That is, that is the narrative that the ungodly world, the ungodly ideology of the world starts. And we are wrong if we repeat it without factual information. You cannot prove that Derek Chauvin killed him because of racism unless there's evidence to prove the case. Groups, specifically African Americans, are treated by the police. Uh, not to mention, it's also brought into question whether or not he was killed by Officer Chauvin and the knee on his neck or by his own substance abuse. It was by his own substance abuse and his knee wasn't on his neck, it was on his back shoulder blade. Um, that being said, I want you to know that when I first came out with a video, or when this first happened, and I saw the video floating around the internet, I immediately made a, uh, uh, a response video and that's the problem. Did you hear that? As soon as this came out, I immediately made a response video. Well, how could you do that? How is it that we're making immediate response videos without all the facts? How, how are we doing that? And listen, I get it. I used to do that. I just told y'all I'd read an article or oh, excuse me, I wouldn't read an article. I would look at the headline and I'd share it on social media. And some of my friends was like, yo, E, what's good with you, bro? Like, that ain't true, man. This article, when you read it, is actually saying that white people are racist. That all white people are racist. And it's advocating for systemic injustice. But, but we don't even know that this initial action was racist so e why you nah 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 you can't tell me i know i've been pulled over by the cops i've been handcuffed i've been threatened by the cops i know you can't tell me you can't deny my latino experience all the while i didn't just shut up and wait i didn't just shut up and read the article i didn't just shut up and gather all the information and unfortunately and this is always going to be the case we always going to have people who 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 again immediately make a response video um in support of anybody who has ever felt uh the harsh reality of being an african-american come on bro this is offensive man this offensive what i'm just gonna say it what does what does this white guy know about the harsh reality of being an african-american like, how, how can you conclude that for African Americans as a group? <laughs> what, what arrogance? And again, I'm not attacking him as a person. But I'm saying the, the, this mindset, y'all, this is an arrogant, ignorant statement. But it's based on what appears to be factual based off what maybe people in his inner circle would advocate for or maybe what he's seen on social media or maybe what he's heard uh, from the select group of friends that he knows that happens to be people of color. Again, there's so many different scenarios and, 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 and questions that need to be asked in order to pull out the truth of a matter. We can, we can ask a person of color, right? We can ask them their experience and they go, well, yeah, I, I had none but negative experiences with police officers. Now, mind you, that isn't the universal, that isn't the consensus view of African Americans, but you can ask someone and they'll say, yep, my experience has been terrible. Well, 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 well how? Why? 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 Tell me about that. Well, one time I got pulled over for the police officer. I ain't do nothing wrong. Da, 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 da. And they could go into their list. Okay. Now, in that case, let's just say everything across the board is a reality. Man, that sucks. That's unfortunate. That's too bad. 
But are we going to say that every single time that happens, that 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 was the norm? No, it's not. It's not the norm. And brothers and sisters, just so we don't forget, okay, just so we remember that as Christians, we believe the Bible, right? Just so we don't forget, I got I got to go here because it's so easy for us to forget that we don't function in the way that the world functions, that we actually have a word from God concerning matters like this. Let me give you, let me give you one here right here, okay? Romans 13. Let every person be subject to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except from God, and those that exist have been instituted by God. Therefore, whoever resists the authorities resists what God has appointed, and those who resist will incur judgment. Question. If we have people resisting God's authority in the form of law enforcement, for example, okay, now, is there abuse by law enforcement? Absolutely. And so what should you do? Take it to court. You should take it to court. But you shouldn't take it into your own hands to resist them because you are the court of opinion in that moment and expect to get out alive or expect for there not to be repercussions. We say, yeah, I did everything I was supposed to do and I still got, I, my cousin still got shot or I still got harassed. I'm sorry. And I really mean that. And that's unfortunate. And that's, and, but, but brothers and sisters, are we saying that's the norm across the board from all white police officers to all people of color? We can't say that because that's not the truth. Let me go on. Therefore, whoever resists the authorities resists what God has appointed, and those who resist will incur judgment. For rulers are not a terror to good conduct, but to bad. Would you have no fear of the one who is in authority? Then do what is good, and you will receive his approval. For he is God's servant for your good. But if you do wrong, be afraid. For he does not bear the sword in vain. For he is the servant of God, an avenger who carries out God's wrath on the wrongdoer. Come on, y'all. So, so if you're out there living the hustle life or the thug life, right, and and, and you 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 embrace uh, hip hop culture's ideology. And listen, I know because I grew up on hip hop culture, and I love hip hop, right. But I'm talking about the mindset of hip hop culture. If you embrace that, and you embrace a worldview that is contrary to God and the Word of God. And you live a life of rebellion against authority and authorities. Then God has placed the governing authorities to punish evildoers. Okay? You can't break the law and commit lawlessness and resist arrest without God's deacon properly responding. And being treated differently because of that. That's a lie. You see? That's a lie. Um, in the last week, I had someone come on. And so they just got this stuff fresh in my brain. In the last week, I had someone come on that video, refer to the off, the, the Derek Chauvin chase or, or a case, and basically say, you know, maybe you spoke too soon and you should repent for your words. Because he's going to come out and he didn't kill him. And this, that, how about and the other. that? The guy was hopped up on drugs. How about that? He was. And it has diminished the ability for what happened with George Floyd to be completely received by people who are not sure that racism is systematic. Hold on before he says the next statement, because the next statement is going to get me. Um, yeah, I mean, now all the information is out. You, you probably should recant what you said. You know, I mean, if you if you were one of those people who bit the Marxist apple, right? That's not an unforgivable sin. Repent. Right? And and repent to the degree that you sinned. 
If you if you got fifty thousand followers or forty thousand or ten thousand or a thousand, and you perpetuated a lie publicly on your your your, your channel, then make a video stating that you were dead wrong, and edit that joint. You see. So so the the. The, the, the more information that's coming out isn't diminishing racism because the case wasn't racist or uh, it, 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 its genesis wasn't based on racism. You can't prove that. No evidence has come out to prove that. If he would have said... I'm gonna go. I, 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 today I'm gonna go kill me a nigga. Today I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go step on some nigga neck and I'm gonna destroy. See, if we got evidence of that, that man was racist. That man was racist. That's a racist man. But we don't have any of that. And I know this is hard for some of us to say, Edwin, but I. But I just want to speak out against racism. I, my heart, I see it. I see it. They speak out against it. But speak out against real racism. You see? You want to help? Speak out against real injustices. He said, well, how do you know that, that this case isn't a real injustice? I don't. And I'm not, and, uh, the, you know, I don't. And that's why we have due process. Now, when we find out if such and such a case is, you know, is racist based, then we speak out against racism. Because the word of God has something to say against that. Because people are created in the Imago Day. Because people have worth in themselves because they were created by God. And there aren't different races. We all are one. There, there's a there, there are different ethnicities, different cultures and backgrounds. I don't even love the phrase system systematic racism or systemic racism, but I do think that there is a subconscious racism. Subconscious racism. Subconscious racism. What is that? Subconscious racism. So you so you are a racist and don't even know it. See that that that's a Marxist understanding of racism. You see that that's that's uh Robin D'Angelo saying that uh that 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 racism is in the air. That, 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 and again, he's not saying this verbatim, but when I hear subconscious racism, <laughs> what does that mean? Come on, y'all. Christians. We got to do better. We got to do better. We have a word from God. God addresses partiality in the book of James chapter 2. We see it. But we can't be making up terms and then wanting to, to, to bring that into the sphere of truth when it isn't. Subconscious racism. That is fully in operation in our culture. And so because of George Floyd's condition, he was... Full of drugs, apparently. Full of them. Uh, there is the question now of, did Derek Chauvin just do what was police policy, do what he was supposed to? Did he actually kill him or did he die from an overdose or whatever that may have caused, a heart attack or whatever it may have? Yeah, that's what happened. That's what happened. Because more information came out. Okay, we have more facts. Facts over feelings. You say, see, Edwin, you 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 ain't got no feelings, man. You you you're a Christian. We supposed to be empathizing. Listen, y'all. Listen, listen, listen. Where 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 do we where do we get this? And and y'all 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 hear me, man. It, isn't it isn't it interesting, man? That as as men, I, what I'm seeing a lot of men do 
is take on feminine qualities uh, uh, the, and, and, and using feminine language, right? And it isn't interesting. This is the way Satan came to Eve. Adam was next to her. He deceives Eve and Adam, as rather than standing up and rebuking Satan and crushing his head, he allows his wife to take of the fruit and she gives to him. There we have feminism. We see, we see feminism on the rise right there in the garden. And then we see feminine statements and phrases and ideas being perpetuated by men. So when you start saying, well, we, we, you, you, we, we're supposed to be empathetic as Christians and this and this and that. Yeah, we weep with those who weep, right? But we don't weep ignorantly. Like, like if, if somebody is wrong, we don't weep with them. We can grieve for them, right? But, 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 but the whole weep with those who weep, rejoice with those who weep, that's a weapon. That's a misusing of God's word. He didn't say that, but I, I, I'm kind of trying to dig a little deeper to the root of these arguments, right? Because I've heard others, and i got another video coming later, dealing with, with, with an individual who has said these things. But just weeping with those who weep and, and rejoicing with those who rejoice. Yeah, but on what basis? Isn't just this nebulous weep with those who weep? And so now that you're speaking against this in, in a way that doesn't seem to be nice... Then, then, then you're, you, you see, then you're not, you're not really empathizing with those who are going through hardship and struggle. It's like, yeah, bro, we, nah, you're wrong. Ben, um, but here's the thing. I want to ask you about Lieutenant. All right, this is where he makes the break. So he's making a contrast between. And this is the name of the video, the George Floyd you can't ignore. So the, the 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 premise is okay. This is what happened with George Floyd. More information has come out, um, and so so that information has caused people now to minimize or undermine or to ignore the reality of systemic racism or subconscious racism, right? But what about this case? All right. Well, what about this case, Nazario? So let's fast forward to today, okay. which what's funny about this is it actually happened in December and we just heard about it because now he's suing the police station. So I'm not one. Okay, so <laughs> it's like that happens all the time because there's there's due process. It isn't like, okay, well, this happened, this happened yesterday. So now, you know, uh, th you know, now this is going to go public. No, a lot of times there's a lot of things that happen behind the scenes. Right. So so sometimes we'll see something that took place months ago or a year ago because there was a lot of things that needed to be worked out in the process. It's not like there's trying to be this big cover up. Listen, God will expose all things. And and God is the God of justice. OK, so 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 again, we can't speak into the motives as to why something came out so late. I don't know. It's a hundred different thousand reasons why that could have been the case. Who knows? Okay. We'll talk about it in a minute. And I was going to play a little bit of the video. You can play, you can go find that. I'll actually link to it in the description below. And if I forget, kindly tell me that I didn't put the, the video in the uh, description. Um, but in the video, you clearly see of the entire incident that Lieutenant Nazario, who, by the way, is an Army lieutenant. He is a medical officer is treated with the utmost disrespect and lack of understanding from the officer who has been fired, by the way. Um, that officer's name is... Listen to his last name. Let me see here. Um, uh oh got an ad. Listen to his last name. Joe uh, Gutierrez. Mm. Um, so he was let go. He was fired. Mm. All right, so you so 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 now remind you, we talking about racism here, right? We talking about subconscious racism. Um, Gutierrez, 
sound like a Spanish name to me. I'm just saying. It's like Ramirez. That's my last name, Ramirez. Well, well, Ramirez is not a is not a white last name. You see, I don't even want to go there. Who cares what his last name was? If if he did wrong, regardless of his ethnic background, then justice must prevail. But if he didn't do wrong, then justice must prevail. So Gutierrez, that don't sound like a white. So why are we talking about racism? Why are we why are we talking about racism? And and if and if this is a case, right? All right. Well, see another another police officer. All police officers are different. All police officers are different. Let me let this keep going. From the police force, rightfully so, I believe. After seeing the interaction, it was. Very and and let's say let's say he was let's say he was wrong, and and after investigation they determined he was wrong. He was fired. He was let go. See, but that isn't enough. That's never enough for the woke mob. It's never enough. Very, very clear what was going on. Uh, Lieutenant Nazario, who serves this country and provides or contributes to the provision of freedom that we have. So does the police officer. Was uh, treated with the utmost disrespect. Nazario was respectful in his response. Uh, he, he did ask for an explanation over and over and over again, which nobody would give him. They were demanding that he get out of the car. But he was asking over and over again in what I thought was a respectful way. I watched the whole video. Um, you can tell in the video he's very nervous. As a matter of fact, there's a point in the video where after he has been pepper sprayed in the face for not getting out of the car, his arms are out of the car the entire time, by the way. They were hostile with him because he drove to a gas station that was well lit because he was worried about being in a dark place. God only knows. All right. Right. Okay. So in their minds, um, if you keep driving after the police officers ask you to get pulled over, um, they're going to be a bit perturbed because they don't know what they're getting into. I mean, they, they didn't see that he had army fatigue or you know army army gear on it was nighttime so they didn't see that he was a black man they just see whatever the situation was i don't know if it was a taillight or something they, they they ask him to pull over and he keeps driving in his mind he's like all right well i ain't trying to get pulled over in the dark so i'm gonna go into the light okay now i'm not saying that that's right pull over OK, you pull over because if you keep driving and now you pull over to this, this, uh, this, uh, this place with all lights, that's fine. But that's not why I asked you to pull over at, because I don't know if you're trying to get away one or now that you don't pulled over what I'm stepping into because you didn't stop initially. So I don't know now if I'm approaching this car, if you got some heat on you, right? I don't know. And and again, brothers and sisters, I'm just saying that these are the, to to conclude that this is racism. Number one, and, and talk about whiteness and unconscious racism, which I don't even know what that is. <laughs> um, there's so many, so many things here that are being, um presumed right so many ideas that are functioning as a foundation but are sandy let me let him finish talking that was why they pepper sprayed him in the wide open in the in a lit area god knows what would have happened in a dark area especially if you saw the way this officer was acting but you stop bro and tell he's nervous so he at one point they open his door he will not unbuckle himself. I know why. He didn't want to reach down because he thought that's where he was going to 
be killed. So you've got the, you don't know that, bro. This currently serving military office officer, he's a medical officer. He's respectful. He's got his hands up. He's told phrases from the officer. You're fixing to ride the lightning, son. Tells him if he resists anymore, he's going to tase him. Tells him he's going to tase, tase him. When he's asked to get out of the car, he very clearly says, frankly, I am scared to get out of the car right now. This is after they've come up and started yelling and assaulting him at the, well, verbally assaulting him at the door. The officer responds with, you should be. Okay. Again, I'm not, I'm not privy to all the information, right? Um, again, we would have to prove that he saw this black man driving, right? We'd have to prove that it was his intent to 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 threaten this guy. Again, did the did the officer say things that he shouldn't have said? Probably, right? It's probably it's probably inappropriate. I, I I don't know the situation to be honest with you, enough to say that I, I see see when when you get the footage like this, you're getting the footage as it happens. I I don't I don't have a I don't have it's like taking a verse out of context, right? You are reading your Bible and you you see this verse and you say, see, that's the that's what this verse says right there, and it's like all right, but there's a context. There's a whole context, right? There's a there's a book. There's a chapter and there's a verse, and then and then you 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 pull out a little more. There's there's covenants, all right. Then there's authorial intent. See, there's a bunch of different things that take place. But when you got these little clips, and this is why we take it to court. We take all the evidence, all the facts. You gather information, and based on the information that's gathered, you make a conclusion. But when we see these little videos. I have no idea. I have no idea. He tells, he tells him he's scared, scared and the officer was... And neither do you. Just to make that point. I have no idea and neither do you. Not just Jason, but anybody who just immediately makes videos and responds. Immediately. Response, you, you should, should be. be. He, he is, is pepper sprayed, sprayed in the face. face. He's yelled, yelled at repeatedly. He's handcuffed on the ground. ground. So, explain this to me. I get it. George Floyd. He was a drug addict. Congrats. You fixed racism. Great. Great job, sir. Come on, man. Come on, bro. <laughs> George Floyd was on drugs. Woohoo! No systematic racism problem. The whole thing would... There isn't a systematic racist problem. And the George Floyd situation doesn't prove that there's a systematic racist problem. George Floyd, all because he was on drugs. Explain, Explain to me about, about Lieutenant Nazario. Nazario. Why, Why was he treated, treated this way? way? From a Latino. Gutierrez. Because he's connecting the George Floyd thing in this to systemic racism. Huh? If, if there's, there's not an issue... issue. What's, What's funny, funny is, is over the last year, we have heard, heard about the conversations that black parents have with black children who are talking. See, this right here frustrates me, too, man, because, again, <sighs> all right, let, 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 let's talk about the talk. OK, let's talk about the talk. The talk. Some of y'all know what the talk is. Black parents who have conversations with children, their black children. OK. So maybe you know or you don't know this. I'm getting hot. Um, my stepdad, who raised me since I was three, was a black man. Okay? He's a black man. Still alive. If you ever see this, Dad, shout out. Love you. Um, and my dad, we had to talk. My dad said, son... If you ever get pulled over by the police, you be respectful, you listen to what they are telling you, and you tell me what happened after, and I'll deal with it, and we'll deal with it. We'll move forward from there. 
But you know, my dad and I had that conversation. Well, guess what? Every parent should be having their that that conversation with their children. You see, but the narrative is black people have to have this conversation with their children because only black people deal with injustices when it comes to the law enforcement. Well, where is that idea perpetuated? It's perpetuated in our music. It's perpetuated in the media. It's perpetuated by um, white people who think they're helping, but they're not. It's perpetuated by people of color who were guilty of being idiots and arguing and fighting and cussing back with the cops. And they have their own spin on the information. See, so so there's been times, man, there was a time I remember. I was in high school. We went to this abandoned house and was smoking some weed with my friends. By the way, I am a person of color, so this, you know, I want you to lean in and listen to my experience here, okay? So as a person of color, high school, I remember right after school, going into this abandoned house, smoking weed with my friends. And the police officer, eventually, we had done this for about two weeks. And the neighbor across the street, they finally called the cops. Because every day, like clockwork, we go right into that building. Go up one of them, go, go, go up in that house, smoke some weed, right? And move it and keep it moving. Okay? Uh, well, this time the cops came. They identified themselves as police. Oh, no. That wasn't, we didn't say, oh, no. <laughs> Pew. And I was a little chubby kid, so I couldn't get away. <laughs> so I got, I got, I, I got the cop stopped me, right? Me and, me and another friend, me and another guy. Uh, what's his name? I remember his name, Demarcus. <laughs> me and Demarcus. They got us. So we out there. We on our knees. Get on your knees. Or sit down, I think it says, sit down. Sat down, and the police officer, I'll never forget this, man. Police officer looked me in the eyes. He said, what do you want to do when you grow up? What do you want to be? He said, don't waste your life. Don't waste your life. i never forget that. White police officer speaking to a person of color and telling me, son, what are you doing? Now, mind you, my mother and father didn't raise me that way. They didn't. But guess what? I was privileged. I was. I was privileged because I had a mother and a father who loved me. And yet and still I got caught up with the wrong crowd. And yet and still I was doing stupid things. But guess what? I did not. Resist the police. I did not fight back. I did not talk crap. I did not enforce my will against him because I knew he had a gun and I didn't. Because I knew that I wanted to see another day. And I'm not saying I wanted to, I'm not saying that to say, oh, because he's white and I'm, and I'm, now back in the days I used to think that way. All cops are racist and this and this and that, that right? But I, I think in that way because if I run away or if I act a fool, I shouldn't be surprised if there's consequences to my stupidity. But none of these guys talk about this stuff. Everything is just black and white. It's racism. Police officer that pulled this man over wasn't even a white guy. Because, again, that doesn't mean that somebody who isn't white can't be racist. But in in these circles where these guys speak, it's white people. White people are the only ones that can be racist. But then when you have black-on-black crime, or when you have a a, a non-white police officer do something that you can't prove was racist-motivated, then we... Then, then people say it is racism. No facts, no evidence. Let them finish.
told, if, if an officer approaches you, this is what you do. Stay respectful. Keep your hands on the wheel and view, and view at all times. And Lieutenant Nazario is, to the best of his ability, doing this while he is being, go watch the video. It is unreal how this police officer is operating. If this was happening to me, I'd have this dude's job no problem. See? He's talking about he's talking about white privilege here, y'all. Just so y'all don't know, I'm familiar with the ideology. I'm familiar with the term. He's talking about white privilege. He's saying because he's white, he has a certain privilege that a person who's darker in the color of their skin, who has more melanin, is not privy to. Stop, bro. Stop. Who do you think you are? You see, it's one thing to think that you're privileged because others say you are. It's another thing to think you're privileged, privileged because you really believe you are. Right? In other words, the title of whiteness can be placed on you from the outside, from people, and you cannot own it. You say, no, I reject that. Or you can just say what he said and admit that you have privilege and then at that point, now you're saying you're better than me. No, 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 no. You don't have more privilege than me. You don't. Because if you do something stupid, and I do something stupid to a cop who's wicked, or to a cop who who is, you know, having... Uh, to if you if you do if both of us do something stupid, then there's consequences for both of us. Okay, that's my point. Unless you can prove, without a shadow of a doubt, that this cop is treating me in a way that's unjust because of the color of my skin or because of my last name. See, there's so many factors that go into these things, brothers and sisters. Now, now this happened in December. December. We're just now hearing about it. I'm just now hearing about it for the first time in five months. Okay. So, George Floyd, he was on drugs. Okay, cool. Explain, Lieutenant Nazario, why did this happen to him? And here's the other thing. <laughs> well, explain, explain all the other times this happens and we don't hear about it. <laughs> explain that. Explain all, 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 all the all the white people that had gotten killed by law enforcement. Explain that. We live in a fallen world. And just because the media chooses to highlight something, or just because now something comes to the surface, and it happens to be a black man and a white, and in this case it wasn't a white officer, Gutierrez is a Latino name. Now we want to broad stroke things. Come on, bro. I want, I want you to keep, keep in mind, mind. This, this was December 5th. 5th. I heard about this yesterday for the first time. So let me ask you a question. question. What, what else have you not heard? A lot. While you're making your decisions on systematic racism or a subconscious racism or the fact that black people are treated differently than white people in this country, while you sit there and make that decision based on the handful of black folks that you know socially but won't have a conversation with. See, that's bear false witness. You see that? You see that? I'm hearing that more and more and more. Did you see that? The charge. You see, so 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 in that statement, you're inherently racist or you're choosing to ignore the reality intentionally. So now you you're, you're you're assuming my intent, right? Because I don't agree with your conclusion. Or because I don't agree with the the social narrative. So the conclusion is you you distance yourself from people of color and you don't want to have a conversation with them. Well maybe maybe I have had a conversation with them and all of their testimony comes against what you're talking about. And maybe sure you could find a bunch of people that would agree with you. But black people are not a monolithic group. And it's funny he said this statement here because he then goes on to talk about the two black friends that he has. 
So here we have a white guy who doesn't have many black friends, admitted, admittedly, and he'll get to that in a minute. He didn't say that verbatim. Right? But then he reaches, now Now that he finally sees that racism is a real thing, because prior to this George Floyd situation, he really didn't know, now he sees it. I'm upset, y'all. Forgive me. Okay? Because I, I'm tired of the lies being perpetuated. Okay? But, but now he sees it, and now he's trying to rebuke you because you don't, have, you, you don't want to have a conversation when this guy only has, and I'm not going to say he only has two black friends, but listen to this. While you're making that decision based on the stuff that you're listening to from people who say everything you agree with, why aren't you listening to people you disagree with? I mean, my God. This See, that's another charge. See, that's another charge. <laughs> Don't you listen to people you disagree with. See, so, so again... Where this is coming from, and I've, I've, I've followed his content, him and another individual, I follow their content. They're alluding to um, the the conservative, you know, uh, conservative Trumpism, and you know uh, uh, that th that kind of narrative. So this is a charge. We only listen to people that we agree with, and we don't speak to anyone else. Um, excuse me. Um, show a little more respect. And listen to my Latino experience. Okay? Isn't it ironic? Is it funny that we got a white guy who wants to educate me and others about systemic racism when he don't even know about that life? When he don't even know about racism. He he admittedly said it wasn't until the George Floyd situation that now is now he sees the reality of the problem. What world have you been living in? What people have you been listening to? How you learn? I mean, it, it's it's weird because you know the the handful of 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 incidents that we have access to that have been shown to us that have actually happened in the country, you don't believe those because it's only a handful of incidents. You also only have a handful of black folks who are telling you there's no problem. There's only that's a lie. A handful of black folks is telling you there's no problem. First of all, the fact that if we're going to play these these games, if we're going to play these like, you know, black experience games, people of color experience games, the fact that there's any black people telling you that it's not a problem. Why do we neglect their experience? Like, like what's what what's wrong with their experience? Oh, see, now nah, their experience don't count because they, they've been bought out by the man. Or, or their experience don't count because they're not really black. They do this all the time with Odie Bakum. The man was raised in, the man was born and raised in Compton, L.A. And he ain't really black. Why? Because he don't agree with their narrative. And so what happens? I'm not even going to open the book. I'm not even going to open up fault lines because it, it, it's dangerous. It's oppressive. What about the black experience? Huh? What about the Latino experience? A handful of people like a Candace Owen out there who's saying there's no problem. And when you look at these handful of people, you go, well, obviously they know what's going on. They're also a small sample. Stop, bro. How would you know that? What? <laughs> How would you know that? And even if you could prove that, We'd, we'd have to talk to these people to see if their opinion is even validated on anything factual. They could all be subjective feelings, not substantiated, not substantiated in anything factual, opinion based. And that's fine if you're in the world and you want to think and live that way. But as Christians, mm -mm. nope, we've been called to a high standard. You ought to have a conversation with someone, sir. You ought to have a conversation with someone, ma'am. Come on, man, stop. So what else have you not heard about that's happening out there? Think about Ahmaud Aubrey. Yeah. We didn't hear about this when it happened either. And for uh, I think it was a month later that we heard about it. This was in Brunswick, Georgia. The guy who killed him walked around. No problems for a month. No arrest. No... 
<laughs> Questioning. Shot him in broad daylight. Drop him in the middle of a road. You see that? Come on, y'all. You see that? He's parroting the narrative of the world. Vigilante at best. It was vigilantism, vigilantism at best. best. I, I think it was all out racism. racism. See that? There you go. I think it was all out racism. You see how these words, brothers and sisters, words have power because words carry ideas and ideas change the way we live our lives and they change the way we function in society and they change the way we vote. You see that? No arrest. You know, when George, George Floyd, Floyd died, I started having conversations with African-American friends and... Ask <laughs> when George Floyd died, I started having conversations with African-American friends. Come on, bro. This is why, man, is better for... This is this is what really bugs me, man. Is like the worst the worst people to be speaking on this man are like white people who think they're helping but they're really not. Stop, bro. You gonna rebuke me because I don't agree with the with with the narrative that's being shoved down our throat by the mass media. And you only you you only started speaking to your African American friends about racism after the George Floyd situation, bruh. I lived that life. So what are we talking about? Now, when I say I lived that life, don't think that I'm saying I was a thug and I grew up gang banging. I no, I didn't. I grew up with a mother and a father. I grew up on the outskirts of the hood. It was like. Seriously, borderline hood, because like where I'm from, where where I was born and raised, like two, three blocks over is when, you know, where, where things took place. And, and, and all the people I went to school with were in and out of prison or killed or, or uh, involved in, in black cults and all these things. I grew up in that area. But you know what saved me? My dad. My dad. My dad would not let me go down there. My dad wouldn't let me go to Prospect. My dad wouldn't let me go to Uniondale. My dad wouldn't let me go to Hempstead. My dad wouldn't let me go to those places. That's why I wanted to be so bad. Because that's where my friends were. And I resented it growing up. Man, my dad, he saved my life. He saved my life. And the sooner we start speaking the truth, to people, we will start helping save their lives as well. But if we perpetuate lies and misinformation and start slandering and bearing false witness, then we continue to perpetuate a lie and we help no one. Asking questions. Question. And I was shocked. What, what I, I heard, people, people who I've known for 10, 15, 20 years, people, people who I have known for the majority of my life at this point, point who have walked. So you, you know these people 10, 15, 20 years, and you just now started talking to them about race. And now your eyes are woke. You open now. Three, three things that, that I never knew they, they were walking through. through. Not one, but two, two of my friends who are, one of them actually isn't, isn't even black. black. <laughs> See? Oh, man. Oh man, this is too easy, man. I'm not, and again, man, I'm not trying to shame Jason, man. So please, if 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 that's how it comes off, please, please know that that. I, I'm again, I'm I'm doing my best, honestly, to deal with the idea, and 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 I, I like I like Jason as a person. I do. I don't I don't have any dislike for him. Okay, but he's not. I, I'm just using this video as an example for the. The, the the consensus of people who think in this way. It's funny because he's he's repeating ideas that leftists use, that that cultural Marxists use. I'm not saying he's cultural Marxist. I'm not saying that. Okay? I'm saying these are these are parroted ideas 
that he's perpetuating. He's Puerto Rican, but he looks black. And two of my friends who are <laughs> very dark complexion, two different people in two different cities at two different times, both of them told me that they have been sitting in front of their house, one of them because he was on the phone and he didn't want to walk into the house while he was on the phone, so he was finishing a conversation, another one because he locked his keys in the house, he was waiting on his wife to come and, and let him in, so he was sitting in the on the front porch. This is two different people, two different situations, two different ages, two different areas, two incredibly close personal friends of mine. Both of them said in both situations where they went in front of their house, that they had a police officer come, not tell them anything that they were going to do, come in, start yelling at them, handcuff them, throw them on the ground. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. So, what? all right, Christians, what do we do with that? What do we do with this information? So, first of all, look at his face. This doesn't seal the case, okay? I have no idea who these people are, okay? And... Let's just say all things equal that that this was an unjust situation, right? In both situations. Let's say let's say everything is true. The information that he's communicating and the information that was communicated to him was the unadulterated truth. Right? Let's just say that's the case. Well, yeah, they, this this crooked cops I mean, you look, you look at all that's taking place during the whole, uh, the whole uh, COVID situation. How, how, many, how many white people have been unjustly treated by law enforcement during this whole time? A lot. A lot. I just saw a video of, 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 of somebody being held down while being forced to take a vaccination. That's unjust if that's against their... Uh, you know, th th their rights as a human being, if they don't desire that. Police busting through somebody's house because this person violated COVID standards and, and, and instead of isolating, they ended up going out. That's unjust. Well, guess what? In those two situations, those two situations, they weren't black. You see, yes, we need to hold people in authority to a standard. And the standard needs to be according to just weights and measures. But when we start saying, well, see, all, see, I had these two black friends. See, it's not about your black friends. It's not about your dark skinned friends. If this is the case and everything is equal, that was wrong. That was wrong. Were these cops white? Were they black? Were they Asian? We don't get any of that. But it's a slam dunk. Unconscious racism exists. It's a slam dunk. You heard his story. He has two black friends. Come on, bro. Stop it. What do you do with that? You need to have some conversations with some folks, my friends. I don't have a solution for everything. I've probably said things in this video that are wrong charged by privilege on some level I, I don't have a solution i don't know how to fix it for about 10 days i thought my god i might have to run for office i don't know what to do what else i can do that would make a contribution to fix this you can wait for all the evidence to come back you can pray and god give you wisdom on what to do according to the scriptures and then you be a truth speaker. And you be a truth speaker without showing partiality. So if your black friend or your person of color friend is wrong, then you tell them. You don't be afraid of them. You tell them the truth. And if your white friend is a racist, you tell them the truth. Or if your black friend is a racist, you tell them the truth. Or if you have your own prejudices, then you sit under the truth. That's what we do. We are truth speakers. I was shocked when this went down with George Floyd. And so, yeah, maybe George Floyd, maybe his situation is diminished a little bit. I can't look at 
what how Derek Chauvin had his neck on his or his knee on his neck for that long. I he mean, did it. move it somewhere. He but, did it. Uh, maybe that's diminished a little bit. What about this guy who's serving the country? Pulled over, did everything he was supposed to do, got pepper sprayed in the face, threatened to be tased, told he should be scared. The only compliance the guy didn't do is not immediately stepping out of the car for a traffic violation. And the way he was treated, I'm almost certain the reason he didn't step out of the car is because he was afraid he was going to be killed. And to be honest with you, when you watch the video, I'm surprised he wasn't. And I can't see from the video, but I wouldn't be shocked if I read and saw or saw a video and saw that they had their weapons pulled on him. I would not be surprised. Oh, boy. So, again, tell me why you don't recognize a problem. Because if you don't recognize it, you're choosing that at this point. Doesn't mean it's not there. Okay. So, that's that. Um, Yeah, folks. That's what we're dealing with here. Um, What I'm going to do is there's another video I have. I'm just going to post it in the link below. You can take a look at it. This is uh, a video where the officer uh, speaks with U.S. Army 2nd Lieutenant, uh, Lieutenant Nazario, following the traffic stop okay (laughs) because of the time i I can't i can't i don't want to make this a two hour long video it's already long enough but i want you to 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 look at the video that i'm going to post below and this is what i mean brothers and sisters we need more information before we start concluding things in fact you know what i'm going to play it I'm going to play it. Okay. I am going to play it. All right. I want you to watch this. I'm just going to put my screen up and let y'all watch this. I think the first couple minutes is silent. Let me see. Yeah. First couple minutes is silent. This, so he's being assisted here. Okay, this is after the matter. He's being assisted. You can tell he's got his eyes are puffy because he uh, got pepper spray in his eyes. Okay, they're saying something here. Let's fast forward it. I had no tags displayed. I actually came out. Hold on. Okay, here we go. All right, Mr. Nazario. So. Back, let's go all the way back to square one, okay? I turned around on you at food line. I actually came out of cost plus, and I came up behind you. I, I you saw had, you before you turned. And you had no tags displayed. I, I see it, but part of the law, it has to be in the license plate bracket. I understand it's paper, and I understand why it's there. Yes. But at that- No tags displayed. Okay? That was the, that was the initial pullover. It wasn't because he was black. Okay. At that time, I had no idea. I didn't know that you had a vehicle registration until I approached your car. And at that point, I was too busy dealing with you to deal with the tag. You want me to wipe your eyes? Okay. So, look, all this was going to be was, hey, man, I stopped you. You didn't have a tag. You got your driver's license. I ran you, and you have been on your way. All this was going to be. But it got escalated. Let's see. Let's see what happens. Well, what about a two-minute traffic stop turned into all this? As, as I was telling him, you know, I've pulled over to well-lit areas before, and I've never looked out the window and saw a gun so blazing so immediately. So, so, so the reason we did that is because we followed you for a mile and a half with lights and sirens on, and you didn't pull up. Ah, okay. As I suspected. You see that? The reason why... They, I guess, pulled out their guns was because they followed him for a mile and a half. They didn't know what they was going to get into, as I said in the video. I understand you want to get to a low lit area, a, le- a well lit area. I get that. But when we follow you that long, look at look at the climate this day, and against everybody, against us, against y'all. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm not out to hurt you, and I know you don't want to hurt me. That's not what it's about. 
what it's about is making sure that everybody goes home at the end of the day. Come on. Come on. Come on. You heard the police officer. Man, you see the climate we're living in? You see what's going on in our day? I don't know what I'm getting into. If you're driving a mile and a half after we had the lights and the sirens on, what am I supposed to expect? I'm just trying to get home to my family. So when you don't stop and you continue to proceed, our suspicions are raised. What's going on in the car? What don't you want us to see? So you pull into here and if you were to just comply with the simple commands that we were giving you originally, it would have been done and over with. And you were if you would have just complied to the original commands that were given, this would have been over with. What a lesson to take, young people. If you would just comply and listen to the commands, all this would be over with. You think about all the people, the black people and the Latino people or the people of color that were killed. Over the past, since, since all this racist and systemic racism conversation has arised, if they would have just complied, and if there was an injustice, it would have been taken to the court of law, these people would still be alive today. You would have got back on the car, you'd be gone by now. But you wouldn't get out the car, you wouldn't comply. It was, it was just looking out the mirror and seeing your guns out already. That's what I was actually like, what's... What's going on? I was just and and and, and not to mention you have just not, I know you aren't reaching, but not to mention you had a gun at your right leg. You, you get our perspective there on the safety issue for us as well. You get that? He's shaking his head. Yes, he gets it. Yeah, yeah, I, I do. I do, and that's and that's why I, I put my hands out. I asked him, what do you put when you put your hands out, they were like this outside the window. How do we know nothing's in your hands? And I was telling you, stick your hands out, stick your hands out, stick your hands out. And I was having you step out, and you wouldn't do any of it. Come on, y'all. This is why we need to be slow to speak, quick to listen. You following what I'm saying? Okay. So this can go one or two ways, okay? I, I don't want to hear you up. I'm going to be straight up with you. You're a good man. You've made lieutenant in the Army. How hard was that? That wasn't an easy task, was it? It wasn't. And, and what, would this, what would this do to your career? I heard it. And I'm in the, I'm, uh, in the middle of getting promoted right now anyway. So yeah. To what, captain or first lieutenant? Um, so first lieutenant. Okay. So you, and then when we get you out of the car, we have to wrestle with you on the ground just to get your hands behind your back. Just to put you in cuffs. Just for a safety matter. You follow where we're at? I mean, what, what would you do if you came across that overseas, you know? You were in infantry and you came across that. You follow me? Mm. Come on, y'all. Are you following me? Where I'm coming from, I'm trying to work with you as much as I can. I would have never wanted, like I said, it would have been a simple, you know, hey, I see your tag now. You know, make sure you get a display on in the proper spot and you'd have been moving on with your day and I'd have been moving on with mine. But here we are. Now, this guy right here is Gutierrez. If, it, if it's not this guy, it's the one that was speaking to him. But I think this is Gutierrez. And I keep calling you a kid. I told you I'm a veteran. I respect rank. Okay? I, was a, I was a corporal in the Marine Corps. I respect rank. However, I do have a job to do, okay? I just talked about Chief Police. You asked for a superior. He's off, obviously, right now. Saturday. I called him. He came out. He talked. Here's how he... What I was thinking, I told what I wanted to do. He said, that's no problem. Two ways we can handle this. We can either sit here with you until you get your eyes back where you can see, and I mean at a good distance, you're safe to drive, okay? And you're going down the road. Go do your deployment. Go continue to serve in my country, which I respect and I thank you for, okay? Or we can push the issue, write your tickets for no uh, license plate, display, and for resisting, or not resisting, uh, obstruction of justice. I don't need to go that route. Because that route makes the army get involved, and I know how they are. The, uh, you don't know this. The army, he'll, he'll vouch for it. 
um, he's, he's been in and he's got friends that are legal officers, I know. The military is the only place where, the military is the only place where double jeopardy exists legally. Because whatever we do him, we do him, the army can turn around jam for the same thing. See, he's looking out for his best interest. You see, we love we love to jump to racism, y'all. So after this comes out, all y'all who've been talking about how this is an injustice and all this and this and that, man, y'all need to repent. I don't want to happen. You're obviously a second time. You ain't been in very long. But if you plan on making a career or even six years or whatever, it's up to you. I don't care. There's no need getting this on your record. I don't want any record. However, it's entirely up to you. If you want to fight it and argue, I mean, and I don't mean to disrespect you, okay? I mean, you have that right as a citizen. If that's what you want, we'll charge you, have you go to court, notify the command, do all that, or we can take the take time out of our night, which is not a problem. We, or on, we're being paid to take care of people, okay? We'll sit here with you, get your eyes back, you and, uh, what's your dog's name? Smoke. Smoke? Um, you and Smoke can get on down the road, okay? It's entirely up to you. What do you want to do? I got no problem. I'll sit here with you, take your tries back, and send you on down the road. Okay? I don't want to charge you. I will. It's my job. But I don't want to. The chief's giving me discretion on how to handle it. He's like, these are the two choices. I said, that's what I was thinking. That's what I want to do. He's like, not a problem. We can either let it go, help him out, get his eyes back, and get him on down the road so the so army doesn't get involved. Or we can charge you and it's a big hassle for you. It doesn't change my life one way or the way. You see what I'm saying? It's not about me. This is about you. What you want to do. If, it, if, if you want to just chill, let this go, and no charges filed, we'll take the handcuffs off, you get your bottle of water to drink on, and sit here until you feel comfortable driving. All right? Or the other option is we write the summons, just charge you, and we, by then we have no choice. We have to notify your command. Again, I don't, I don't have any ass, I don't seem to be threatening. Uh, I say that because that's just the way it is. Okay? I just talked to my boss. Those are two choices that he gave me. This is why we need to wait. This is why we need to wait. Personally, as a veteran who served, okay? I did my I did six years before. My wife's a retired sailor. I don't want to see you get jammed up by the army. Okay? I don't want to see it happen. If you need to spit, just let us know. Go ahead and spit. I, we've both been sprayed, so we know what it's like. It sucks. If you need to spit, go ahead and spit. You're not going to offend us. All right. Um, what do you want to do, Lieutenant? I'll let you tell me because I mean, no, nobody's going to actually charge you. So you know. I'm not going to ask you that. I understand that. However, I have to make that option available to you, right? I mean, I, I, mean, I have to. So, here's what I want to do. Especially as, as, as calm as you've been since everything ended, I'm going to take the handcuffs off, let you sit here with smoke. We'll sit here and wait with you. Let your eyes come back. Take his, it, take, it takes anywhere from 20 to 40 minutes, depending on how much actually got in the eyeball itself, before you can really see well how to drive, especially at night. Okay? We'll sit here with you. And then we'll cut, get you on down the road. And this man won't know nothing about it. Hmm. Alright? I, I do have a good rapport with my command, so I wouldn't feel right not talking to them okay. about it. So well, that's what's happening. I'll put it this way then for you. They're going to hear from you. They will not hear from us. Hmm. I give you that much respect, okay? Because I understand. I was told you, I was in for six years. It's always been a man to hear from you than somebody else. Especially law enforcement. That's never a good thing. Go ahead, little helper. Go ahead, little helper. Go ahead, I get it, okay? I get the time that we're in right now. I get it, okay? The time that we're in, the, the, what the media is doing, what the race relations between minorities and law enforcement, I get it, okay? So like I told you, as far as you not stopping, if it's you're comfortable and you want to well this spot, we tell that happens all the time. It happens to me a lot. Yep. And it's, it's I would say any time, not always, any time, it's a minority. And I told you it's a minority. I told you. Alright. Let's stop here. Alright, y'all. Well, 
we're going to stop here. Thank you all for those who watched. And um, leave a comment behind. Like, subscribe. Um, share this video. Comment on this video. This was a long one. But I, I, I had a lot on my mind that I needed to get out. Um, yeah. All right, y'all. This is The Proverbial Life, a podcast where we encourage Christians to look to Christ. Live wisely. Leave a legacy behind for generations to follow. If you have not subscribed to the channel, please do so. Share this video. Support the ministry on patreon.com uh, backslash proverbial life. All right, y'all. Grace and peace.